1 Samuel chapter 26, Saul is in pursuit of David again because some people tell Saul where David is. Let's dive into the word and learn more about this story. The Ziphites went to Saul at Gibeah and said, Is not David hiding on the hill of Achilah, which faces Jeshimon? So Saul went down to the desert of Ziph with his 3,000 select Israelite troops to search there for David. It says that Saul made his camp beside the road on the hill of Achilah facing Jeshimon, but David stayed in the wilderness. When he saw that Saul had followed him there, he sent out scouts and learned that Saul had definitely arrived. So basically, Saul's in pursuit of David. David's kind of watching out, seeing what's going on. It says that David set out and went to the place where Saul had camped. He saw where Saul and Abner, son of Ner, the commander of the army, had lain down. Saul was lying inside the camp with the army and camped around him. David then asked Ahimelech the Hittite and Abishai, son of Zeruah, Joab's brother, who will go down into the camp with me to Saul? I'll go with you, said Abishai. So David and Abishai went to the army by night, and there was Saul lying asleep inside the camp with a spear stuck in the ground near his head. Abner and the soldiers were lying around him, obviously not doing a good job of guarding the king. Verse 8, Abishai said to David, Today God has delivered your enemy in your hands. Now let me pin him to the ground with one thrust of the spear. I won't strike him twice. He says, It won't take me two stabs. I'll get him good with one stab, David. Don't you worry. But David said to Abishai, don't destroy him. Who can lay a hand on the Lord's anointed and be guiltless? As surely as the Lord lives, he said, the Lord himself will strike him, or his time will come and he will die, or he will go into battle and perish. We will find out later in chapter 31 as the book ends, he will go into battle and perish. That will be how Saul meets his death. He says, but the Lord forbid that I should lay a hand on the Lord's anointed. Now get the spear and water jug that are near his head and let's go. So David took the spear and water jug near Saul's head and they left. No one saw or knew about it, nor did anyone wake up. They were all sleeping because the Lord had put them into a deep sleep. Okay, so we see that God's on their side, that God is helping them as they're doing this. Then David crossed over to the other side and stood on top of the hill some distance away. There was a wide space between them. He called out to the army and to Abner, son of Ner, Aren't you going to answer me, Abner? Abner replied, Who are you who calls to the king? David said, You're a man, aren't you? And who is like you in Israel? Why didn't you guard your Lord the King? Someone came to destroy your Lord the King. What you have done is not good. As surely as the Lord lives, you and your men must die because you did not guard your master, the Lord's anointed. Look around you. Where are the king's spear and water jug that was near his head? Saul recognized David's voice and said, Is that your voice, David, my son? David replied, Yes, it is, my Lord the King. And he added, why is thy Lord pursuing his servant? What have I done and what wrong am I guilty of? Now let my Lord, the king, listen to his servant's word. If the Lord has incited you against me, then may he accept an offering. If however people have done it, may they be cursed before the Lord. They have driven me today from my share in the Lord's inheritance and have said, go serve other gods. Now do not let my blood fall to the ground far from the presence of the Lord. The king of Israel has come out to look for a flea as one hunts a partridge in the mountains. Then Saul said again, I've sinned. Come back, David, my son, because you considered my life precious today. I will not try to harm you again. Surely I've acted like a fool and have been terribly wrong. He says, basically, Saul acknowledges again, David, I don't know what's gotten into me. I don't know why I keep trying to pursue you to kill you. I don't, I don't know why I keep acting like this. Sometimes in our life, you know, we can probably feel this way. Man, I messed up again. Why did I do this again? Why do I keep letting my feelings dictate my choices? It should be choices lead, feelings follow, but I keep letting my feelings dictate what I do. Saul is finding himself in this situation with David once again. Here's the king's spear, David answered. Let one of your young men come over and get it. The Lord rewards everyone for their righteousness and faithfulness. The Lord delivered you into my hands today, but I would not lay a hand on the Lord's anointed. As surely as I value your life today, so may the Lord value my life and deliver me from all trouble. Then Saul said to David, May you be blessed, David, my son. You will do great things and surely triumph. So David went on his way, and Saul returned home. We hear David say he begins to have a different line of thinking in chapter 27 as how he's going to continue to move forward after the second time that Saul has pursued him and God has protected him. Now, I'm going to give a little bit of an opinion here. This is not quote-unquote black and white. But Saul has pursued him multiple times when he's been in the land of Israel. And every time Saul has pursued him, God has preserved him. But David thinks in his mind, I need to go to the land of the Philistines, the land of my enemies, so that I can escape Saul. 
I personally don't think that this is the best move on David's part. The Bible's not black and white on whether or not it was wrong or not, but there are things that take place that we'll learn about later in Ziklag in a later chapter. I believe it's chapter 30. We'll learn about some things that take place that um, caused a lot of pain to David and his men, and I really do believe that his best course would have been to stay inside Israel and continue to trust God and not try to do things in his own strength. Now, the scripture does say that, um, you know, when our ways please the Lord, even our enemies will be at peace with us. And just as Saul was at peace with him at times, so were the Philistines, and he was able to live there. But I say all that to say, I guess the best way to put it is when he does this, he doesn't consult the Lord. There's so many times in the scripture where he inquires of God, where he consults the Lord. But chapter 27 opens up by him saying this, David thought to himself, it doesn't say David talked with God, David discussed with God, David ran it by the priest or the pastor in his life. It says David thought to himself, one of these days I'll be destroyed by the hand of Saul. The best thing I can do is to escape the land of the Philistines. Then Saul will give up searching for me anywhere in Israel and I will slip out of his hand. Basically, in, in my interpretation, he says, I'm gonna do things in my own strength. I'm gonna do it my way. So David and his 600 men with him left and went over to Achish, son of Maok, king of Gath. David and his men settled in Gath with Achish each man and his family with him. And David had his two wives, Ahinoam of Jezreel and Abigail of Carmel, the widow of Nabal. When Saul had told, was told that David had fled to Gath, he no longer searched for him. So he did accomplish his goal. He did, he did accomplish his goal by going to the land of the Philistines. However, in the accomplishment of one goal, there were other things that he opened himself up to. And so it's really interesting how the dynamics play out. It says, then David said to Akish, if I found favor in your eyes, let a place be assigned to me in one of the country towns that I may live there. Why should your servant live in the royal city with you? So on that day, Akish gave him Ziklag. Ziklag is significant because Ziklag would be raided by pirates later on and burned to the ground. And David would experience great loss that day. And it has belonged to the kings of Judah ever since. David lived in Philistine territory a year and four months. Now David and his men went up and raided the Geshurites, the Gerzites, and the Amalekites. From ancient times, these people had lived in the land extending to Shur in Egypt. Whenever David attacked an area, he did not leave a man or woman alive, but took sheep and cattle, donkeys, camels, and clothes. Then he returned to Achish. When Achish asked, where did you go raiding today? David would say, against the Negev of Judah, or against the Negev of Jeremiah, or against the Negev of the Canaanites. He did not leave a man or woman alive to be brought to Gath, for he thought they might inform on us and say this is what David did. And such was his practice as long as he lived in the Philistine territory. So he went and he attacked other areas in the Philistine territory that was not near where he was staying, and he made sure that he left no one alive so that no one would tell the Philistine leaders what he was doing. When they asked him what he was up to, he would always talk about how he was in Judah. He was basically, he gave the impression that he was raiding in Israel, but he was really raiding in the Philistine territory. He was not being honest in this moment. Akish trusted David and said to himself, he's become so obnoxious to his people, the Israelites, that he will be my servant for life. So he's in the land of the Philistines. He's safe from Saul. He's seemingly becoming prosperous by raiding the land of his enemies, and he's gaining in wealth and acquisition, and everything seems to be going great. But as we'll see in our video, Sometimes in life, everything is not as it seems. And there's gonna be some interesting dynamics that take place. And it's gonna be really interesting to see how God moves and helps David recover in a tough situation, in a great loss. There's gonna be a lot that we're gonna learn from. But what I love in this story is that God continued to preserve David, that God continued to go before David, and that David continued to restrain himself from attacking the Lord's anointed. What I learned from the story, but I don't love about the story, is that David thinks to himself, I'm gonna go stay in the land of my enemies. And it doesn't say that anywhere he consulted with the Lord. I personally think that the Bible highlighted it that way for us to be able to learn, hey, before we do something that might seem good in the natural or might seem wise in the natural, let's make sure in big decisions that we run it by the Lord. I don't just wanna move my family for money. I wanna move my family because the Lord's called me to move my family. If the Lord hasn't called me to move, I'm gonna stay put because I wanna be operating under, in, and all about the will of God for my life. And I know you do too. Be blessed.